What's up, Floor Homers? My name's Aaron, and in this video, I want to show you 10 more awesome lighting options for WLED. I did a video like this recently, and you guys seem to really enjoy it, so let's go ahead and do it again, starting with these crystal balls. These balls have a really unique look to them. They're pretty similar to the fairy lights I've shown previously, but instead of a diffusing coat on them, they have molded transparent plastic balls. They came with their own controller built in, but you can see that it's a three wire setup and I'm pretty sure they're just WS2812Bs, so I'll just cut off the controller exposing the three wires. There were red, blue, and black wires, so I assumed that red was five volts, black was ground, and blue was a data line. I used my handy wire strippers to remove the shielding and then connected it to the Athem controller. Sure enough, that worked, and all I had to do was make sure that the color order in WLED was set for RGB rather than GRB. They look really great close up because the balls have little bubbles in them, making them give off an aquatic vibe. These can be great for a Christmas tree or pretty much anywhere in your house, and I wouldn't restrict these just to the holidays. Just an FYI guys, I left links to all the products we're going to cover in this video in the description. And if you use those links to buy anything, I get a little commission which helps out the channel. This next one is something I've always wanted so I decided to make it happen. Ever since I saw Nanoleaf's panel lights, I wanted some that worked with WLED. Some people have done that with a homemade solution, but I wanted to see if I could buy something off the shelf and convert it. This kit comes with 10 LED hex panels, a bunch of sticky pads to mount them, and some connector pieces. The panels are a molded plastic housing and the face is a translucent diffuser material that can be removed. Inside you can see a white PCB with 13 evenly spaced 50-50 SMB LEDs. Each side of the hex PCB also has a USB port which has four contacts inside. Only three of those contacts are used. One is for five volts, one's for data, and one's for ground. Little connector pieces are supplied so that the panels can be connected in whatever order you'd like to achieve the look you're looking for. These lights come with their own controller that connects to the first panel in your chain, but since it's a three wire controller like the last one we looked at, I decided to cut it out and connect the output cable to a trusty Atom controller. Surprisingly, it works right away, but I do have one issue with these, and that's that as far as I can tell, each panel of these is individually addressable, but not each LED. This means that each panel of 13 LEDs is treated as a single LED in WLED. So while you can still get some cool effects, you can't get a gradient across the hex panel. Now I have seen some of these on Amazon that appear according to customer images that you can set a gradient across the LEDs. So I may check some of those out and try them out in a future video if you're interested, but these ones still look pretty cool despite the fact that you can't get that gradient across the single panel. Definitely still not a bad kit for the price in my opinion. The next set of LEDs are something I've never seen before, but look like something you could use for some DIY projects. Each individual LED is housed in a plastic panel mount case. Each LED is connected in the string with detachable connectors. And the idea is that you can drill a 20 millimeter hole in a panel of whatever kind you like, pop the LED in and screw the plastic nut it comes with onto the body of the casing. This is a great way to make some sort of marquee sign for a display like a party or a wedding or something like that, but still keep those LEDs recessed inside the sign. There are even power injection wires supplied on one of the LEDs, so you can put that mid-string if you want and inject power there. That's pretty cool. If you guys have any ideas for how I could use these, let me know in the comments. Anyway, they do look pretty cool, and I'm sure I'll find a good use for them at some point. The next one I want to show you is this neon tube light. If you saw my last video, this one's very similar to the neon rope I showed, but it doesn't have that reticular mesh on the outside, but it's still a silicone tube that diffuses the WS2812B LEDs inside. It has connectors on either end though, so you can string multiple of these together. If we connect it to a controller, you can see that the individual LEDs are kind of visible through that tube, at least a lot more than with the neon rope light. I still think it's pretty cool and could be used for some sweet wall art, but it doesn't come with clips, so you'd have to find some of your own. This next one is one that I've looked at many times and never bought and finally decided to try out. They call it an S-shaped LED strip, and it's supposed to be a strip that you could easily bend because of the bends in the strip. There's nothing special about the strip otherwise though, it's just a WS2812B strip. So here's an example of how I guess they're supposed to work. You stick down one section, hold that in place, and then bend the next section up to 90 degrees, and then stick that down. It keeps all of the LEDs flat, even though the strip is bent, and they're all pointing in the same direction. So you don't have the one LED at the bend that's pointing off to an angle. 
The strip is meant to rumple a little bit, but the LEDs stay flat. I guess it sort of works, and here I am bending them more than 90 degrees, but these might be cool if you need to run the LEDs around the perimeter of something and you need to keep it flat. To me, this concept is a little janky, but it may be worth it rather than cutting and adding an elbow connector to your LEDs. This next one is really popular, and it's one I saw first in a Dr. Z's video. If you haven't checked his channel out, it's definitely worth looking at. He's the reason I got into WLED in the first place. These are actually WS2811s, so they are 12 volt LEDs, but each one is addressable. You can see that each LED is attached to a little PCB with a chip on it, and they're encased in a plastic cover. They're also waterproof, which makes them excellent for permanent outdoor Christmas lights. They come with a three wire cable that can be attached to the strip with a three pin waterproof connector and additional strips can be added to the other end in the same way. The three wire cable can be connected to an Atom controller or a WLED controller, but I ended up having to cut back that black shielding a little bit to get it to connect easily. However, once connected, I had no issues and these lights look pretty great with decent brightness. If you look closely at the plastic case, you can see a groove in the case that allows you to snap them into a hole in an aluminum or a plastic channel and mount that channel to your soffit under the edge of your roof. I'll leave a link to some of these aluminum tracks as well if you're interested. This is something that is common in the US, it seems like. I'm not sure if it's common in other countries. I'll also leave a link to a Dr. Z's video where he shows how he sets this up. Okay, now let's look at a new style of LED matrix. At least it's new to me, I've never tried it before. This one is a 16 by 32 LED matrix perforated with a bunch of holes that are actually larger than the individual LEDs themselves. Since the LEDs are so small, the matrix is pretty small too, but you can still get some pretty fine detail with it. It has a three wire connector on it so it can be easily connected to an Atom or a similar controller and set up as a 2D matrix. Once it's set up properly in WLED, you can do all the stuff you'd regularly do with matrices. And the cool thing about this is that the perforations give the matrix a transparent effect. I can see setting up a bunch of these as a massive pixel art matrix. You can see on the back that there are power injection holes, which are great if you're building a big matrix. Next, we have another LED matrix, but this one's weird because it's shaped like a triangle. I thought these were cool, if a little bit pricey, and the first thing that popped into my head was, of course, the Triforce. These panels work pretty much the way you'd think if you used regular square or rectangular matrices in the past. The cool thing with these is the shape, of course, but they can still be strung together in whatever order you'd like. They're also cut in a way that they can actually fit together if you want to make different shapes out of more than one triangle. Anyway, I don't have a whole lot of use for them other than the Triforce, so let me know in the comments if you got other ideas. I tried out some different effects, but none of them were that big of a deal, and since there's no triangular matrix effects in WLED, there's not much you can do with those matrix effects. Okay, next is one that I'm super excited about, and it's this giant WLED controller that WLED.cc sent for me to check out. Now, I have a huge WLED controller comparison in the works, so I'm gonna show this in more detail in that video. So I'm not gonna get into all the details, but I just had to show you guys this as soon as I could. This thing is called the WLED C10, and that's because it has 10 outputs for LED strips or LED matrices. It's called a pixel controller because its main purpose is to control giant pixel grids with the WLED program has inputs for sensors if you want, and an ESP32 direct connection for a microphone and sound reactive WLED. It's even got a button built in on the corner, which is pretty cool. If you wanna see a video where I make a giant pixel matrix, hit the like button and let me know in the comments. Also, get subscribed so you can see that WLED controller comparison video when that comes out. The next LED strip I wanna show you, I'm gonna show you in a second, and it's a 12 volt strip. But for a 12 volt strip, I need a power supply since I don't have too many of those. I noticed this ultra thin 12 volt power supply and thought it was pretty cool. Thin power supplies are great for mounting under cabinets and places with low clearance if you wanna have the power close to the LEDs but you don't want it to be noticeable. I also found a couple small five volt power supplies that I'm showing here, but, but because 12 volt LEDs typically only use 33 milliamps per LED and five volt LEDs use 55 milliamps per LED, the five volt power supplies need to be able to supply significantly more current, so they have to be larger. Okay, so this strip is one I actually mentioned in the previous video but didn't cover, and it's the 12 volt FCOB LED strip. If you saw my last video, you saw the five volt FCOB LED strip that I showed there. That was a favorite of mine, and it replaced a regular WS2812B strip that was on my door frame. 
I wanted to show you the main differences between that one and this one. This one is a WS2811 strip, meaning the integrated controller, or IC, is different than the WS2812B strips. The controller actually handles about 12 LEDs at a time on this strip, meaning one LED in the WLED software is actually controlling 12 LEDs on the strip. This means that the blending and transitioning effects on the strip won't be as good as with the 5 volt one I showed in the previous video. However, 12 volt strips have much less voltage drop along the line, so if you're trying to display a white color all the way down the strip, it wouldn't get as yellowy near the end as it would if you used a 5 volt version. Strips get yellow down the end because there's a voltage drop, and the blue and green diodes are more sensitive to voltage drop than red. Red can actually handle a lower voltage. So the red ends up shining with more intensity than the blue and green, and you get a yellow or an orangey color. Using this 12 volt strip means you're not gonna have to inject power as often, but you're gonna have less smooth transitioning effects. Anyway, that's pretty much it for this video. If you couldn't tell, I had a ton of fun doing this video as LEDs have always been my passion and I could definitely do a part three because there's still a ton of stuff out there left to cover. If you want to see a part three, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe and let me know in the comments you want to see it and that's going to let me know that it's worth my time. I hope this video helps you out if you're looking for some inspiration for some lighting projects or if there's a specific situation and one of these fits the bill. If you have questions, leave them in the comments. Hit subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. And if you want to support the channel, you can either become a member, pick up one of my custom t-shirts on my store, or just like the video. Anyway, thanks for watching. See ya.